We've all heard of Lawrence of Arabia. I uh, may have also heard that uh, he was a bit of a masochist. He um, paid uh, people to beat him. Um, once he discovered, by accident, I believe, in the First World War, that he enjoyed uh, being beaten. Um, the interesting thing is that he discovered something that was already inherent in him. Um, or it looked like it was. It was latent or whatever. Um, and he actually seemed to enjoy being beaten. Um, simple masochism, of course. It's nothing that strange nowadays. Um, it's not considered that deviant, consenting adults, etc. Um, you know, we know that there are people that like being humiliated and degraded, um, sometimes sexually, sometimes not. Um, maybe we have a family member that we believe has a martyr complex seems to get off on being shown to suffer in front of everybody else. Um, uh, there are any number of ways in which people deliberately court suffering. Um, the martyr complex, I would suggest, is something that may actually be learned or even cultivated when you realize that, ooh, if I suffer it gives me some sort of clout in, say, a family situation or a group situation. People will defer to me if I'm um, shown to be suffering. I referred to this earlier uh, in the video entitled, or sorry, sort of subtitled, uh, Suffering is Power. Um, in that case, the end, the desired end is not the suffering, but, but the power that comes from deliberately courting suffering. Now, in the case of Gandhi, he deliberately did this. He was making a martyr out of himself to manipulate other people, um, the British and his followers and world opinion. Um, now, that's cultivated suffering. That's um, suffering with a different end, a uh, different desired result. India is known for this. We've all seen the photographs of the guy with the arm up in the air until it atrophies or... Um, People that um, stand on one leg uh, for weeks, months, years on end, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and that, you know, could be simply a guy becoming a freak in order to attract attention to get people to give him alms. Uh, it could be that he's um, trying to show everybody else just how much pain he can take. It could be that he's attempting, as the theory goes, to mortify his flesh by so inuring himself to the pain that he's suffering that it doesn't really have any effect on him. That was behind the Spartan regime, where, you know, you would have regular beatings and um, you'd be deliberately starved and deprived of comforts and things like that to the point where um, it was alleged you would actually, as I mentioned before, with uh, Mardonius's tent, you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't even be tempted by the pleasures of the flesh. And you might find them vaguely disgusting, whereas, you know, a nice beating or a battle or a fist fight, um, you'd think, well, that's kind of fun. You know, I like getting my face smashed up and, you know, my knuckles all sore after a, a good fight when I punched the guy in the jaw nine times and ruined my knuckles. Um, <sighs> cultivated masochism. Um, let's say, let's take the example of the, 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 Fakir who deliberately atrophies his arm. He holds his arm up in the air for an extended period of time until it atrophies. Um, you can find the images of that on the internet. Now let's just say, let's give this guy uh, the benefit of the doubt and say that he's sincere and he actually wants to actually mortify his flesh. He wants to you know, so many of these Fakirs you suspect are phonies, but let's say that we've got a real one here. And he wants to overcome his flesh. He wants to overcome the fact that he's stuck in this uh, body that suffers and troubles him so often. Um, it's a good description of that in Herman Hesse's uh, Siddhartha, by the way. Fictional, but it just sort of says, you know, he sort of delves into the psychology behind uh, masochistic asceticism and deliberate courting of pain. So... After a while, he gets used to the pain. What else might happen when he gets used to the pain, say, after, I don't know, 
five hours of standing there with his arm above his head, his hand, his arm at full extension. He gets used to the pain. Now, I can't imagine you getting used to that or having the willpower to do it, but let's just say that he does. What else might happen? Might he discover that he kind of likes that pain? He never liked it before. But by attempting to meet that pain head-on, he discovers something else in it. Uh, he discovers that he actually likes it. <laughs> uh, what has happened? He's gone from a non-masochistic person to a masochistic person more or less by accident, or he's just sort of stumbled upon masochism. Um, it's not something that he wanted to do, but by steeling himself to the pain of forcing his um, muscles and his ligaments and things like that to do things that they're not really uh, equipped to do, he n not only silences the pain, as uh, it's said that you can do at, after a certain point, that the pain doesn't have any effect anymore. Um, you know, several hours in a torture chamber apparently has that effect on people. You can pull people's teeth out and apply you know, all kinds of horrible things to their sensitive bits in their body and um, you know, break their spirit by telling them that nobody cares about you, etc., etc. After a while, apparently, um, the, the victim, the subject of the torture, uh, becomes numb and stops to, stops responding. You know, you apply a red-hot poker to a strategic spot and there's no reaction, apparently. Um, okay, you become numb. Now what? Now you keep going. You keep pushing yourself farther and you're exploring the limits of the pain. You're not actually... Um, deliberately doing it in order to suffer, but I think part of what would happen would be you would start to see what suffering actually is of that nature. The qualia of pain versus the experience of suffering. Um, because, you know, pain operates on many levels. Say that I, you know, I'm standing there with my arm above my head. Yeah, I feel gross physical pain, which is the result of, I guess, stimulation of the central nervous system reaching my brain, which translates, we don't know how, in terms of the hard problem of consciousness, into an actual experience of pain, an unpleasant experience of pain. It's not the same thing as, you know, the, the looking at it from the outside, where you could sort of say you had sophisticated enough apparatus, you could map the neural impulses throughout the person's body. Say, so there's what's happening. This translates into an experience of pain, which is a qualia. Qualium? I don't know. Um, which has a certain value. And in most people's cases, it's a negative value. Pain is a certain sensation based upon certain neural impulses that has a certain value. So I'd say that there's at least three elements there, or four perhaps. Damage to the body, picked up by the central nervous system, converted to, or which triggers electrical impulses, which reach the brain, which create a sensation known as pain, um, which is not felt necessarily in the brain, or it is, I guess, felt in the brain, but you know what I mean. You, you're feeling it in your hands. You're not feeling the pain up here when you're holding your, your arm above your head. Uh, but the experience feels awfully cerebral. Um, but beyond that, there's you, know, you can keep going. Is that um, qualia positive or negative? Do you like it or don't you like it? I would assume that if you forced somebody to hold their hand above their head for an hour at gunpoint or something, they really wouldn't like it. You might actually traumatize them. Keep going. <laughs> um, or do it to yourself, where there's, you're, you're coercing yourself into doing this. Something is telling 
the body to do this, even though the body doesn't want to do it. I know that's wrong phraseology, but um, it doesn't... You, you would think that the body is sort of saying no, 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 but after a certain point you wonder, does the body start to say yes, or what says yes to that pain? What is it that translates, say, a beating with a whip from no to yes? Uh, from ah to ah. What, what's going on there? <laughs> uh, how does suffering, misery, agony, etc. get translated into um, what uh, T.E. Lawrence called a delicious warmth, probably sexual, which was swelling through me. Probably interesting. He wasn't sure. He wasn't perhaps used to analyzing his feelings that way or his qualia that way. Um, what's going on? He called it delicious. Um, and again, he was being attacked by a soldier and beaten, I guess, with a large whip. Um, but again, in the case of the guy who's deliberately doing it to himself, he first feels the terrible pain that he must overcome, that he must sort of oppose. And then, let's say, after a certain point is reached, um, it's either the pain has no effect on him, um, or he just doesn't feel pain anymore because his arm is atrophied. Maybe he starts to like it. Um, throughout history, we've, all, we've always, you know, there's cases of this. You know, the North American, um, the Native North Americans to this day do things like, called the sun dance where they uh, insert wooden pegs into the muscles of their chest or their back and uh, ropes suspended hang them up or they lean backwards so, uh, so that the pressure of their body, the weight of their body creates pressure on the incisions containing these wooden pegs that are attached to strings and they're hung by those um, and they'll sometimes be hung there for hours um, Again, simple masochism, so what? Well, yeah, but what is that? What's happening? How are their experiences being altered like this? Again, they're a warrior society. They want to inure themselves to pain. Uh, okay, you get inured to pain after a while. Next thing you know, you want to do it again. <laughs> What's going on? And have you accomplished something by doing this? Have you actually won some sort of a victory? Now that's an interesting question, isn't it? Hmm.